Oh, hold on. Ah. Oh. No. I say, <laughs> yeah. Good morning again. It's good to have you with tuned in with us today on live stream and YouTube today. We appreciate each and every one being with us today. We've got a wonderful parking lot full of people. Thank God for you today. We appreciate you coming, being part of this today. We love you. And I know it's been a long time since we've been able to come together and actually worship together. But that's okay. One of these days soon, we're going to be back together in the house of God. Be able to worship God one more time on this side of eternity's door. But while we're here today, let's honor God today. Let's worship Him. Let's have a good time the Lord while we're here today. Good to see all of you here today. Appreciate you being with us today in the house of God. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Many things to pray about today. We'll go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and get the singing started off today. Let's just worship God. Amen. Flip your life if something touches you just right today. Whatever you want to do, all right? You can holler. We'll listen for you to holler at us, all right? Lift your hand out every now and then and wave. But we appreciate you all for being with us today. Let's have a word of prayer today. Amen. Our Heavenly Father and Most Holy God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to come back into your house today. We thank you for each one that's come this way. We ask you, God, today to just bless all the singers today, God, as they come together and sing forth in the praises of the Savior today. We pray that you just move right now. Move upon this service today, God. We need you today to be with us today. There's, Lord, there's many to pray about this morning. God, where the death angels visit, those that are sick today and afflicted in body, we pray that you'll watch over them today. That you'll take care of them today, God. Wrap your loving arms around them. Pull them up close to you. Let them feel the heartbeat of an almighty God today. Thank you for all that you've already done today. We thank you for what you're going to do. God, have your way in the service today. God, bless your people today. Whatever they might be going through right now, God, we just ask you, Lord, as humble as we know how to ask you, God, you touch their heart and touch their lives today. God, bless them like the only you can, and we'll give you all the praise and glory for it today. Lead us now, guide us, and direct us today. Bless the songs, bless the singers today, and the anthems of praise, God, that we lift up your name today, and we praise and honor you. We love you. Thank you for all that you've already done. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do today. We just ask you to have your way right now. Lead us, guide us, direct us today. Father, in the way that you'd have us to go, we'll be careful, but give you all the honor. Father, we'll give you all the glory today. We'll give you all the praise for it's in Jesus' lovely name that we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. was 
It takes a lot to put all this stuff together and make it work right. We got Baptist equipment. It works sometimes and sometimes it don't. But that makes you feel good, don't it? <laughs> but it's good to be in the house of God today, just to be able to come and worship God today in spirit and truth. And you know, this song is my first verse, is my testimony. Yeah. Not everybody knows where I came from. Not, not everybody knows where I've been. But thank God I had somebody that fell in love with me years ago. 2,000 years ago, he died for me. He fell in love with me just like I was. And it don't matter who you are today, he fell in love with you the yes, same way. Amen. All we are today, and all we can claim to be, is nothing but just an old sinner that's been saved by the grace of God. Thank God for that today. <laughs> If you could see what I once was, if you could go with me back to where I started from, then I know you would see a miracle. Jesus took my place. 
This is my testimony right here, this song. It's a lot of our testimonies. But this definitely is my testimony. A lot of fun, brother.
get weary and so slow But a brighter day is coming Soon I'll sail on heaven's shore And I won't have to worry anymore No, I won't have to worry When I reach the other shore All my troubles will be over And I'll rest forevermore And my eyes will be on Jesus And my heart will be Listen to words just so.
precious blood that gave me life. Technical difficulties again. Amen. Is that Baptist stuff? I got you. We're good. You got your Bibles? Turn with me today in Romans chapter number 12. In Romans chapter number 12, the first two verses. We've heard a lot of people preach on this and talk about it, but I want to share a couple of things with you today. And I want to ask you today, what has this virus done in your life? What kind of changes have you had to make in your life? What kind of things have you had to make? You see what we're doing today. This isn't an easy thing to do, trying to pull all this together, bring all this together. Even on a cold day where the wind is rolled down, it's probably a little cool in your car. But well, you can turn your heat up. Honey, it's already hot enough up here. Amen. The Spirit of God's been moving in this building today. Thank God for all the singers today and everyone that sung this morning. We appreciate each and every one. But let's look at the Word of God and see what the Bible said in Romans chapter number 12. He said, I beseech you, that word beseech, he was begging the people in that day, the question that you and I are faced with on a daily basis that we don't understand. There's been times that we don't understand a lot of things that happen. We go to the grocery store and we don't find exactly what we need. How many times has that happened? Not to any time, just lately have we had that problem. The problem that we're seeing today, how has it affected your life? How has it affected your home? How has it affected your family? I, I, we know the schools have closed down. We know a lot of shops have closed down. You can look around today and see so many things have changed. But aren't you glad today that our God hasn't changed? Aren't you glad that we still serve a great big God? We serve a loving God today, and we serve a God that has never changed. Thank God that he hasn't. We changed. We're the ones that made a change. We're the one that changed things in our life. He hasn't changed anything. He's still the same God that he's always been. But he said, I beg you, therefore, brethren, he was calling out to all the children of God, all those that love God with all their hearts and with all their soul and with all their being. He said, by the mercies of God. How many of us know what a mercy is? Thank God we know what mercy is, don't we? We know about the mercy and grace of God and what God did for you and I that day 2,000 years ago in the no rugged crowd. Praise God today. I'm excited about what we're able to do even right now. And it might have been complicated throwing all this stuff together, doing all these do. But you know what? It's worth it to be able to come to church and be in church with you for a little while. What a joy and a privilege he's been. But he said that God that you present your body. You got to present yourself. How many times when you go back and you remember when you were as a child, when you, Christmas time was rolling around, we always liked that present, didn't we? Oh man, I always grin and smile. I, I know some of you cheated. You went over and pulled the tape up and looked under the, I know some of you did. I already heard the story. But you know what? It don't matter. What was that present? present today. What about the present that God gave me? I need to present myself back to him and give myself unto him. The Bible said to present my body a living sacrifice. You're no good to him if we're not alive today. I need to be alive. You need to be alive today in our heart and our life today and realize that God is our hope. He is the hope and the assurance of our salvation. The Bible said a living
living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable servant. It's reasonable. He's not asking too much of any of us today. All of this stuff that we've done, all these times having to come and do all, it's worth it. Anything that we do for God, honey, everything we do, it's worth it today. It's worth to be able to come and worship and honor God in a safe way. Honey, we want to keep everybody safe. I don't know about you, but I want to be safe. You want to be safe. We all do. And as long as we keep our safe distance, we keep that Lysol can blowing. Hey, it got foggy back here a while ago, but it wasn't the Lysol spray that you saw. Amen? It's called the Holy Ghost of God. Hey, they fill this place today. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world. It's easy to because we live in it. It's easy to transfer and hey, be conformed to the world. It's easy to be like the world because we're living in it. But we need to come out and be a little bit different. The Bible said come out and be you different and touch not the unclean thing. That's what God's called us to be. He said be you transformed be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sometimes we just need to be right, right, brought back to my attention. How many times have I heard this message? I've read this. I've got it marked in my Bible so many times I almost couldn't even read it today. But you know what? It's alright. We need to be reminded. Hey, reminded that I need to renew my mind. I need to make peace with God. I need to get right with God. I need to keep my heart where it needs to be with God right now. Whatever that it takes today, I need to make peace with an almighty God. God today, but we love the Lord, renewing your mind that you may prove. Hey, you don't have to prove anything to anybody but Him. Amen. Nobody has to be proven to be anything that you do in your life. Only one I need to prove anything to is my God. Amen. Amen. We need to prove ourselves to an Almighty God. But the Bible said, "What is your good and acceptable and perfect will of God?" That's what it's all about. It's about God's will and doing things to please God and make sure it's all in God's will today. But the Bible said how in the world in this coronavirus, the Bible's teaching us today, we need to renew some things in our life. We need to get back to a place that we honor God. I don't know about you, but when the schools closed and the school kids all came home, and whenever they came home, and they've been home ever since, sometimes that's not been easy on some parents. I know it hasn't, but you know what? Here's the thing. What did you learn? What did God bring together? God was bringing the family back together like the family used to be years ago. I don't know about you, it may have made a hardship in a lot of people's life, but we realize, spiritually speaking, that God was trying to teach mom and dad to get back to that play, teaching and training our children. We expect the school system to do it all. The schools can't do it all. Hey, we got to do something in nurture and admonition of our Lord to teach our kids in the ways of God today. <laughs> hey, you've had that opportunity that God's touched your life and helped you along the way. Hey, we need need to reach out a helping hand to those that are around us today. But the Bible teaches today in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2 but in 1 Corinthians 9 27 he said but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection lest by any means when I have preached to others I myself have been a castaway. How many times did Paul stand up and he preached the word of God? How many times did he stand and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Hey I don't know about you but he said I need to keep my body. That's my job today. It's entirely up to me. You know when I got saved, I thought God was going to drill a big old hole right at the top of my head and just dump all that stuff right in there. It don't work that way. The way it works is we learn day by day. Each of it, That's why he told us in 1 Corinthians 9, 27 to keep under my body and bring it under subjection. I need to do that. That's my job. That's my duty to God today, to keep myself humble and before the God. Hey, I'm the the only one that can do it. You know what? Aren't you glad the preacher can't do nothing about it? Say amen right there. I'm glad that he can't come to my house and tell me how to live and what I need to do. Hey, that's entirely up to you. It's between you and your God today how you live your life. But Paul was telling the people in the Corinthian church, hey, there's some things that need to be made right with God. Hey, let's go back and let's renew those things before an almighty God. Keep under my body and bring it under subjection. I'm 
the one that needs to keep my heart where it needs to be with God. I believe God's going to do all this. God's going to keep my heart. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. Hey, it's my job to stay right with God. It's entirely up to me to be where I need to be. First Thessalonians chapter 4 in verse number 4 that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor. We need to know how to live before God. I need to know. Hey, that preacher points his finger at you on Sunday. Don't worry about that. All I got to do is worry about the words that comes out of his mouth. If it comes from the word of God, that in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4, everyone should know how to possess. I know what I need to do. Then why am I not there? The biggest problem that I have in my life right now, and each one of us have, that we face every day in our life, is that I know that I should, preacher. You know what? The Bible said those that know it to do good and do it that not to him it is a sin. And they, if I'm guilty of that one sin, the Bible said I'm guilty of all. I need to realize how simple it is to fall into sin. How simple it is to commit that sin. And help. But that's where I fall away from God. I need to draw closer to God. That's where he said bring your body under subjection unto the Lord. Hey, God's got this thing today. He's already got it. He's leaving it up to you and I to do the same thing. We need to do the same thing in our life. I need to make peace with God. Whatever that it takes today. Let's make that peace with an almighty God today. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse number 4, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Thank God God picked you out. Way Amen. Isn't that great to know already working away so you can be saved, that you can be born again, that God can touch your life and bless your family. Thank God I, that excites me today. Hey, they ain't giving me much room to run today, but I'm going to find a place, amen, to realize what God is doing in our heart and our life today. He said, according to chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, before the world was ever created, you was thought about, amen. Thank God today we realize that God was thankful about you today. Why does God need you? He's got angels that worship Him. They're all around the throne of God this morning. He's got angels that worship and honor Him. He wants you today for one reason, and He wanted somebody of a free and a willing spirit to worship and honor and glorify Him. That's what God was looking for, and He's still looking for that today. The Bible said, according as He had chosen us in Him, before that found, I'm not going to get past that one, I don't think. I still got a few more Point, but I still think about what God did for me when I was an old country boy. When I was living way back, I wasn't living for Him. I didn't love Him at all. I didn't care nothing about church. Church was the furthest thing from my mind. Thank God He kept dealing with my heart and He gave me one more opportunity to get right with Him and make peace with Him. Thank God He came that one more time and dealt with my heart and gave me His salvation. The Bible says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love that's what it's all about being holy before god you don't gotta prove nothing i know that's not good grammar you don't have to prove anything today before anybody else but god you hear me today you don't have to live up to everybody else's standard you don't have to live up to the baptist standard we don't have to live up to the church standard we're to live up to god's standard that's a higher standard that we ever thought of today we need to have god's standard applied in our life today the Bible said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. I don't have to worry about anything else falling apart. This building might crumble. This concrete might not hold me. Say amen right there. It may not hold me. Things may not be nothing that you can promise today. Nothing I can hold on to. But I can tell you this. God's got your life today. God's hand is stretched out over your family and your heart today. God's trying to bless you if you just open up and let him bless your life today. The Bible said, nevertheless, after all else is said and done, after all the fog clear, after all the problems of life that you've been faced with in your life, all the things that you've went through, God still got his hand on your life. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we can still feel and know the love of an almighty God today? God loves you today, and God cares about you today. Why in the world did he ever create you? Why was I created? I'll tell you why. There was a purpose behind why he created each one of us today. Hey, that purpose, we each know in our own heart and life what God wants in our hearts right now. 
God knows and we know right now where we need to be with him. The foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. Thank God I'm sealed. I'm sealed with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, I'm a Baptist, but I believe in the Holy Ghost. Don't you? Amen. How about that? I'm sealed today until the day of redemption. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to know if God's going to hold me long enough. How long when he's going to let me go. My Bible said he's going to hold me in his hand. I'll always be there. Thank God I'm telling you, God's good today. And God's willing to touch every heart. He's willing to touch every life today if we'd just be willing to say out to him today. The Bible said the Lord knoweth. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. The Lord knoweth. God knows your heart today. God knows the situation that you're faced with. He knows the changes that we've all had to go through the last few months. Listen, God already knows, but God's got this thing today. God's going to touch your life and bring it all back together one more time on this side of eternity's door. We just got to be patient. But notice there's a seal. God put a seal on my heart and my life and in your life today. He put a seal on each one of them. He's got a hold of you, honey. Don't let go of that and hold on to his hand. The Bible said his unchanging hand. That's the good part of that. God does not change. God's always the same. He's never changing. He's always just like he said he's going to be. God loves us today. The Bible said that he knows them that are his. And let everyone that name of the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's time to come out from among the world. It's time to be separated today. God's got us today. He's got us right where he wants us to be. He's got our attention. The things that have gone on around us today, no doubt he's got a lot of people's attention. Some things that are going on, everybody wants to blame the devil. It might have been God himself trying to get a hold of me and get my attention and say, look, I can take this thing that you love so dearly, those things you watch on TV, all these different, hey, and what about your children? I can send them back home to you and see how that works. Hey, God can work all these things around. We need to see the hand of God upon our lives and hearts today and realize that this may have been for you and I today to grow and nurture and admonition of our Lord and Savior today. I need God more today than I've ever needed in my life. The Bible said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. I don't have to worry. You don't have to worry when everything else is crumbling in around us today. When worlds are falling apart, countries are falling apart, countries are warring against themselves, everything's getting bad. Even you go to the grocery store, people fighting on their buggies. Amen? Have you seen that? You better be careful we are still told when you go to the short stores I've been to. Hey, they get rough, amen, and get pretty rowdy. But you know what? God said everything is standing sure and standing firm in him today. We've just got to trust him. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse number 19, everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's time that you be counted as a Christian today. You count it as a child of God that God would touch your life and touch you today and change some things in my life. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20 said, I am crucified with Christ. Do you realize that every day of our life that we're crucified? Our bodies are sacrifices unto God, a holy sacrifice. Hey, sell it out to God. Give it to God and let God say, look at what God can do in your life. We don't know what God, big things God has in store, but I know it's going to be good. Hey, I don't know what tomorrow is, but I do know who holds tomorrow, don't you? We know who holds tomorrow, and we know that he, as long as we're in his hand, everything's going to be all right today. The Bible said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. I thought I was living for myself, preacher. No. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20 said, I'm living for Christ. I'm supposed to be living for God 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days out of the year. He said, yet not I, but Christ 
liveth in me. Thank God today. Aren't you glad you got somebody to help you? Aren't you glad you don't have to travel this old road alone? Aren't you glad that you don't have to go through these hardships when death comes and sadness comes and problems come and trials come? Aren't you glad you got somebody that you can rest on and rest assured that he's always there? I don't have to question and wonder if God's there. He's always there just like he promised. He said in Galatians 2.20, Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Thank God today. I live by faith in the Son of God. What about you today? Are you trusting God today? When this thing first came on and it first started happening to our good old godly America, we call it, what kind of problems did it bring in your life? Did it make any changes at all? You just say, hey, I'm still serving the same God. I'm still living like I always was. Hey, I'm still going to live for God no matter what. That's what it's all about. Standing strong and standing firm in the Word of God today. The Bible said in faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me to realize he loved me. He cares that much for me. He cares that much about you today. He loves every man, every woman, every boy, every girl inside this world. He loves them. Blaspheme in his name, he still fell in love with them. He sent his son to die on an old rugged cross of those that cursed him and took his name name in vain. But you know what? He still loved them anyway. Thank God of that great big love of a great big God that I can't get past today. I can't get past that because I don't understand why he loved me that much. But you just read your Bible. You got to trust him. You got to have faith in him and know that he means those scriptures for you. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Thank God when I got saved, everything changed in my life. Ever did I live a perfect life? I've not lived a perfect life. Nobody had. My Bible said there was only one. His name was Jesus. Amen? The only person in this world that was perfect and will ever be perfect is Jesus Christ. But you know what? I'm glad that I have an advocate with the Father. All I got to do is bow my head when I sinned against God and I went the wrong way. I took the wrong decision. I made the wrong way. I went the wrong person. The place. Hey, God said I'll forgive you. And you know what? He'll forget it too. He forgave me. He forgot about it. Just confess that sin before an almighty God today. The Bible said in Ephesians 6 and 6, He said, It's not with our service as men pleasers. How many times did you want to do something for the preacher? How many times did I want to do something to please mom and daddy? How many times did you want to please Green Palm Baptist Church? Please stop pleasing them and please God first. But I guarantee you, please God first, they'll be pleased. Why? Because we're all serving the same God and we're all serving the same way. Hey, we're all to have our own heart and life secured before God. He said, not with I serving. I'm not doing this so you can smile and say, hey, the preacher is doing something. That's not what it's about. It's about loving God with all my heart and sharing the gospel with a lost and dying world. Look around you today. Hey, there's a lost and dying world around us today. Maybe that's why God worked us out this way. We can come out and preach and let people know around in our community that we love them and we love God and God loves them and we want to see salvation salvation come to this community. We want to see that soul birthed into the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. I don't care what we pay. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what kind of labor it is. Hey, we're going to do what it takes to get the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at that building right there. It didn't come free, but I can tell you we ain't got to worry about paying for it. God's working that out. You hear me? God's worked it all out. There's a reason why it's there. It's to draw in kids and adults that don't go to Hey, the gospel will preach right there as good as it'll preach right here. Meet me over there one day and we might just preach in there. I'll show you that we can preach out there, in there, over here, back there. We can do it anywhere that we need to, to reach the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and a dying world. We love this world. We don't love the sin, but we love this world. And we want to see that soul birth in the kingdom of God. 
We want to see them say, don't you? That ought to be the love and the concern of my heart and your heart today. The Bible said, Ephesians 6, 7, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not unto men. Don't worry about the, what the preacher's been saying. Hey, we'll do it for the preacher. Stop it. Do it for God. Realize everything that you do, you're doing it for your master, for your Savior, for your God. That's what it's all about. That's when you'll know the blessings of God will reign on your life. When you start doing it for God and do it for the honor and the glory of God, God's going to bless your life even more. Can you even imagine getting blessed any more than you are now? Oh, man, it's going to just get gooder and gooder. Say man. And I meant to say that. Smile. Amen. But you know what? He said, with goodwill, doing serving as unto the Lord. Everything that you do, you feed somebody that's hungry, I guarantee you do it in the Lord's name. And watch how God will bless you. Watch how God can do and make such a blessing in your life today. The Bible said Way on down in Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it but this one thing. This ought to be the prayer and the desire upon every heart of every man, woman, boy, and girl, child of God right now. I've only one thing that really matters in my life. What's that one thing? Forget the things which are behind me. There's been some people saved and birthed into the kingdom of God. Man, isn't it wonderful to know those that have? He said, but forget about what was behind you. Think about what's right here. And think about what's right here in front of you, Green Pond Baptist Church. There's some good things that God's got for you. And God's looking for his children to stand up and be counted today. Hey, let's stand up for the glory of God. Let's step in there for the glory. He said, forgetting those things which are behind. What's behind? Behind is already past. It's already dead and gone. Start today with a brand new life and let God change your life and change the patterns of our life. If that's what it takes today, when that virus came into this country, nobody said we don't want it. Everybody said it. But did that change? No. It still came right on into our country. There's something we need to realize today. We got to trust something a little bit higher than what this country can. Amen? I can't trust the politician. Well, at least some of them anyway. I better straighten that out or I'll get in trouble. Amen? But you know what? There's a thing I can tell you. I can trust my God today. I can trust God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my being today. He said, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before there's something ahead for the child of God. Child of God, don't give up too early. Don't throw in the towel. Hey, throw in the towel when you're ready to quit. I'm going to hang on tonight as long as I can. I may only have a couple of fingers holding off, but let's hold on to it and let's live for God for as long as we can, as long as we live that consecrated life before an almighty God. The Bible said the things that are behind. Let's reach for it. Let's reach for it. There's some good things ahead, child of God. There's some good things ahead for all the children of God that love the Lord with all of their heart and with all of their soul and with all of their being today. Forget those things that are behind. It's time to reach for them. Let's see what God's got ahead for us. We looked up, Lord, what did you have? Lord, we saw that right there was something we saw coming. You've been praying for it for many years. All right, the building's up. What you looking at now? We want to see it full. We want to see kids coming. We want to see lost people come and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to see souls saved. That's what it's all about. The word of God will be taught. It will be shown. It will be preached there just like it is right here. Are you with me today? We're not going to let the gospel go. We're going to hold on with both hands. God's got something to do. But Paul told the people of Philippi, he said, I press toward the mark. There's a mark as a child of God, each one of us should say it, in our own life. I just want to get closer to God. I want to get closer to God each and every step that I take. I want to draw closer to my God. That ought to be our desire. I press toward the mark 
of the prize of the high. Everybody wants the prize, don't they? Man, I want to go to heaven to be with the Lord. The prize is being saved. Hey, I got that already. I've already got what I need with God. God, I just need you to fill me every day and help me every day walk through this walk of life and go through these situations and these problems that I'm going. I press toward that mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. I'm pressing. How hard are we pressing today? Is it like this door? All I got to do is move that one little thing and it'll shut. But I guarantee you if I came up here and started pulling it all by itself, it ain't going to move. Something's in its way. What gets in our way that we can't get to that place? What is it that's in my way today that I can't reach for for that pride of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ? What is it that's standing in my way? Is it something as small as just a little piece of metal that's in my way of the door that God wants to open in my life? There's a door. There's a window that God's got in everybody's life. I hope and pray, and my prayer is today, that each and every one of us are exactly where we need to be with God. We're exactly where God wants us to be. And thank God when I look out here, it brings joy and excitement in my life to see a church. I love this church. I appreciate this church. And child, God's children, some that aren't even members of our church, sitting right here, I appreciate each other. As a child of God, as a brother and a sister in Jesus Christ, we love God. Everybody's loving the Lord today and worship and honor Him and bring glory to His name. But we love God today. We love the Lord today. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brother. I'm telling you, brother, it's time to make that thing right with God. The mercies of God, it's time to present our body a living sacrifice. It's time to present to God. How many times has he presented to you? How many times has he been there for you? Six surgeries. I went through, he was right there. Deaths in my family, he was right there. Hardships in our life, he's been right there. Never left my side. How many times have I failed him? I couldn't count on my hands on my feet, and I'm not going to take my shoes off to show you. Hey, we can't count as many times as I failed him. But my God has never failed. Amen. My God has not, and neither will he not. He said, present yourself unto God a living sacrifice. He wants us to be holy. He wants it to be acceptable. You see, Cain and Abel, way back, God said it had to be a blood sacrifice with those two boys. Why did one kill the other? Because he thought he brought the first fruits of the ground. He didn't bring a blood sacrifice. The blood wasn't presented before God, and God was displeased with his life. And hey, he turned around and killed his brother. Let me tell you how many times that we need to do the right thing. You say, Lord, I'm giving you the best I got. I'm giving you my time. I'm giving you this. God's wanting your life. He wants your life more than he wants anything else. Hey, I'm a Baptist. We take up an offer. You hear me today? But hey, God wants your life more than he wants anything. He wants you to surrender your all unto him today. Whatever. Lord, what can I do for my church? What can I do for my community? What can I do for my country today? Let's reach out today. There's a lost and dying world out there on the outside and out here right where we are. That's why maybe it's echoing through this valley that somebody can hear the gospel and know that Jesus Christ loves them with all of his heart, with all of his soul, and with all of his being that one day soon that they may be born again. That's our desire. That's our prayers of Green Pond Baptist Church. We're not doing this to interfere in anybody else's life. We just want them to know that Jesus loves them and cares for their soul just like we do. We love you today, and we appreciate you coming and being part of us today. Man, I got 10 more minutes. I can't let you go before 12 o'clock. <laughs> Amen? Smile. I see some of you smiling. You caught that, didn't you? Oh, man. If I let you go before 12 now, I'll have to do it from now on. I can't do it now or I'll have to start on it from now on. Hey, but you know what? The Bible said be not conformed to this world. Let's make some changes, church. Let's make some changes in our life today. Let's ask God to help us. 
mold us and make us what he would have us to be. I can't tell you how many times people have come to me and said, hey, preacher, what does God want from me in my life? I can't tell you. I can show you in the Word of God some Scripture. But that's between you and your God today. What you're supposed to be doing. So let's do this. Let's bow our head and let's pray today. Ask God for His blessings upon this service today. Let's pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ got out. Somebody heard about Jesus today. Somebody heard about the love of God in their heart today. That God loves them just like He loves us. Thank God that he does. Let's bow our heads and let's pray today. Our Heavenly Father and Most Holy God today, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege you gave us to be able to come today on this side of eternity's door to worship you and honor you one more time, God. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for that blessing that we had today. We counted a blessing just to be able to be here and be counted as a child of God. Now bless your children today. Bless these that are sick today. Bless these that are not able to be out today and about. I pray that you'll touch them and lay your hand down upon them today. Put your hand of blessing down upon their heart and life. Bless their Lord where the death angels visited and the funeral that we had just Friday. And God, the family, we pray that you continue to bless them, God, today. Touch these, Lord, today. Just needs a special touch of grace and glory. And God, will take this message to heart and apply ourselves unto you and realize today it's not just the church that needs us, God. It's you, Lord. You need each one of us today. Hey, to be a child of God and be counted in the kingdom of God today. We love you, Chador. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done already. Thank you for what you're going to do. Bless all the singers today and what you've done. Bless each one of them today. Every blessing that's been bestowed today, we thank you for it today. Thank you for giving us the privilege to be able to come back on this side of eternity's door just to worship this time. God, have your way this evening, sir. Six o'clock tonight, God, we'll be right back doing the same thing again. Bless your people today. Have your way in everything that's said and done. God, I know that, Lord, that you meant this to me today. Thank you for all that you have done and what you're going to do. Bless your church today. God, have your way right now. Everything that's accomplished and said and done today, Father, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory because it's in Jesus' precious name that we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. You come back tonight, come back at 6 o'clock tonight, bring you a blanket. We'll, amen. We've got people in here complaining. They're sitting in the heat. Amen. That's pretty bad. I'm just kidding. Hey, come back tonight, be here at 6 o'clock. I'm looking for God to do some wonderful things. Amen. God is still on his throne. He's not been dethroned. I don't care what anybody else says. God said he's still sitting on his throne. High and lifted up. And our advocate sitting right on the right hand side. <laughs> Jesus at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us. Come and be back with us tonight if you can. Amen. Six o'clock. Evening worship service. We love you. Thank you for each one for tuning in today. Thank you for being a blessing. It smiled and put a joy in my heart when I looked up. When, when you get ready to leave, let us know if you enjoyed the service. Thank you. Love y'all.